What's up my friends? Welcome back to yet another one. Uh, today we're tying uh, something I've been playing around with a little bit. Uh, I wanted to make uh, an, an attractor fly, uh, meaning uh, I wanted a fly with a lot of colors because uh, sometimes that's the only thing that works. Um, and I've always wanted uh, some kind of fly that would go from some sort of gradient. So this one is from yellow and it would go to green and then orange at the end. Uh, I think it looks really, really cool, and uh, I've named it Tutti Frutti, uh, it seemed fitting. So let's jump down to my vise here and uh, crank out this uh, Tutti Frutti. So the hook in the vise is from Eric's Hooks, of course, and it is the uh, NS156, the traditional shrimp. Um, it has the classic looks, but uh, it's still with the, with the saltwater coating. Fairly a light wire, as you can see here. Uh, it, it, I mean, it doesn't bend easily, but it gives in. As you can see, the wire is slightly um, thinner. And I will not be weighting this one because I like my flies to hover, especially a fly like this. Um, so I have some yellow soft tackle here, which I'll be using for tail. Uh, and see if you can find, let me just, uh, where's the package here? It's just like one of these. Uh, I don't know why I showed it down here, you can't see that. Up here um, from Hairline, it's Metz, Metz Soft Tackle. And some of them, I mean, the tips usually look like this, and then you can just strip off the fibers down here, you know, pluck, pluck those out that you want. But I found one that was kind of like a marabou, and uh, you can, of course, also just use yellow marabou if you have that. But this one was kind of nice because they're so thin. Uh, while we're on the Mets subject, I managed to find a Magnum Grizzly Cape, which is uh, the original for, um, what's it called? Basketbjorn, the raccoon. Really, it's, uh, it's super greasy though. Um, I think I might wash this with some shampoo and some conditioner to get that off. It's like super greasy, but super nice quality. If you have any ideas on what I should tie with that, Feel free to let me know uh, in the comments or uh, whatever, because as you guys uh, are members, you can also help decide what I should tie up next. So give me some ideas uh, and I will uh, tie that. So let's get this grease off my fingers. Plug out the tip here so I can um, pull the fibers forward. I kind of like this and lengthwise I want it to be around the hook shank that length so right around there tie that it in on the top here so now the channels uh, have changed a little bit with the long form video content I have also been thinking about making some, uh, I don't know, weekly or monthly challenges with you guys. I think it could be fun to kind of get back into doing what uh, I love and that is to connect with you guys. So if you have any ideas, again, please let me know. But I think some sort of weekly challenges um, could be fun. Why not start with this one? Uh, you guys tie this up and uh, snap a photo and if you have an Instagram, uh, please share it on Instagram and hashtag it with Coast Fly Challenge or something like that. Um, yeah, th let's, let's go with Coast Fly Challenge and then I can see your work. Uh, we can connect over there as well. I'd love that. Um, I'll set up the hashtag and post this fly as the first thing so you can find uh, the hashtag. Uh, where is my tinsel? I want some of that. And man, my office is just a mess. Look at this. This is what it looks like if you try to balance a watch, a watch modifying company, and photography, and fly tying, and a laser engraver. And I mean, it's just one big mess in here. Also, I'm working on a book. 
There's a lot of thing, a lot of stuff going on. So plug out an olive feather here from this. And I want to kind of see it here. I want it to taper from uh, short fibers to longer here in the in the front. So I'm just kind of measuring out. I want it from that point there, roughly. Snip that off. Like that. So I get a little point to tie it in. So, and now end with the tinsel. You can of course put your own touch to this. This is just to show you kind of my thoughts, um, process when I'm designing flies. Uh, I like to just go through my, my materials and kind of hold them up next to each other to see what would what would fit. So that's the tinsel down there. And then there's two ways to go about this. You can either make a dubbing loop, which I'm doing here, uh, or you could just, you know, roll the dubbing onto your tying thread. Let me show you uh, the, the difference it made. Let's get this one under control. For that, I just do. I think I had some flies lying around here while I was practicing. I don't know where I put it. Back there somewhere. Never mind. Um, <laughs> really prepared today. So, um, if you make a dubbing loop, it gets a little bit more dense um, because you obviously you double the fibers. Um, over themselves in the loop um, so I'll leave that up to you if you like your flies a little bit thicker dressed which I want on this one you can you should use a dubbing loop but if you want a little bit thinner some people like their flies to be a little bit more sparse and more um, see-through so in that case I would just roll the dubbing onto my thread I'm using some orange seals fur which is kind of hard to come by, but you could just, I mean, you could use whatever orange um, dubbing you have. Again, these videos, uh, I always made these videos, you know, just to show some techniques and just uh, for some inspiration. So you don't have to follow them 100% um, like I do. I mean, I like to see different th takes on some flies because that inspires me a lot. I think I'll get a little bit more in here. This, try to get it as even as possible otherwise you will end up maybe tapering the fly the wrong way spin that up get that under control with some hackle pliers like that Push it out a little bit if I could find it. There it is. So brush out some trap fibers here. Like this. And then just work your way up towards the hook eye. I can also 
also just stroke the fibers back and yeah, return. Just got a lot of seals for it, it has that nice boggy look to it. And when it gets wet, it just has the right, right amount of uh, transparency. Lengthwise, if you're wondering about the dubbing loop, uh, I couldn't tell you. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of a just a gut feeling of how much you want to put in there. But um, a tip is just to you know make it put in too much. You'd rather have too much than too little. So as, as you can see here, it might look like it's too uh, not enough, but you want to leave at least five millimeters of room up here because they will, it will have obviously the, the olive green hackle up through it, but also uh, it will get an orange hackle followed up by uh, some mallard at the end. So you want that space up there for that. Tie off the dubbing loop. Push everything out just a little bit. That. that feather. Did I tie it in the wrong way? No. All good. Do get one turn in. Slightly open turns, not not too much because the fly will then just get too bushy. There we go. Starting to look a lot more like a fishing fly now. Secure that. wrap that so it will hold your hackle in place making a nice durable fly and I'd like to put in one extra turn here it will be covered up anyway but because you are counter wrapping it it kind of wants to when you tie it down here in front, you can see it kind of wants to unwrap itself because I wrapped it towards myself, you know, and the tying thread away from myself. So it kind of, it wants to, it wants to unravel itself when you do it like that. So just keep that in mind. Get that rip off, rip off, push everything out just a little bit. And dubbing. Don't be too hard on it, uh, especially if, if you're using. I finally put this one into use. For years I didn't use it because this freaks me out. All this dirt in here. Don't be too hard on the fly here because it will pull the, the rib. Uh, it will pull it in half. So that's that. Let's get in an orange feather. And this is just uh, some cheap feathers I had lying around. Where is it? Here. Saddle haggle, strong, you know, get these everywhere. These I want to be a little bit longer than the olive one, so that is 
point here. And that I want to tie in, uh, not with the tip first, but with the butt ends first. So just pull out the fibers and snip that out so you have something looking like this. Depending on, let's make three or what? No, I think two. Two is enough. I want it to be too much. Secure that. Snip that off. This is also somewhat classic. I mean, I, I kind of get classic, uh, classic fly tying feels from this. So let's get in a mallet feather. And that one you want to be, I mean, I want it to be like, like um, what, what, did you, what did you call it? Kind of like a silhouette around the fly. So well, let me find it, not, <laughs> not this one. Find one that's looking good. Okay, a little bit short. I mean, you get what you pay for in these packages, right? So if you have some of these in better quality, uh, use those. This, this looks good. in tip first so I like to pull the pull the fibers back like this and then just snip off that front part there so you have this one because uh, mallet feathers are fairly thick at the bottom so if you tie it in the other way around you'll get like this massive uh, head on the fly and also sometimes the stem of the feathers will kind of split itself and it's just super annoying when that happens. So I like to tie it in this way. And also, I mean, the feathers on a mallet feather here or the fibers are kind of, they're all quite, I mean, they're all equally long. So I'd rather tie it in. You can really see it here. I'd rather tie it in in the, in the tip where the stem is thin than in the back because, I mean, if you bend these, it'll sometimes they split. Get a few turns in here. Just don't, if you tie it in, in in the tip, just don't pull it too hard because it can break. Let's have a look here. Same thing here, two or three turns is all you need. There we 
go. So, one last thing. I think I want to give this one an orange head. So I'll just put in a whip finish here. And switch the thread to a fluorescent orange one to kind of balance out the fly. That. This is a fluorescent orange tying thread. You can of course just leave this step out if you don't want and an orange head. I think it looks kind of cool together with the rest. Just make a nice little head here. Finish in. Like that. Give it a final brush. Here is one finished. Tutti fruity. Nice little attractor fly. There you go. So thank you guys so much for watching. I don't need to tell you to subscribe but you all, because you already are uh, being a member. So thank you so much for watching. Um, tie up a few if you want to the Coastline Challenge. Tag me and share me share the photos on Instagram if you have an account there. Uh, I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, so if you think it's a good idea, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one.